Excuse me, sir. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. What do you want here? Hi, I'm Vivian. Hi, I'm... Um, I just wanted to, uh... What? Well, aren't you the, uh, caretaker of this cemetery? Of course I am. Okay, well, um, I'm a journalist, and I came here to interview you. What for? Well, I thought that our readers would be very interested in, in uh... Why would anybody be interested in someone like me? Well, sir, your profession is very fascinating in many ways, and I, I, I was just... Yes, yes, yes. Actually, you're right about that. All right, all right, come with me. You're my guest. Thank you. Um... Frederick, right? That's right. Well, Frederick, I, uh... actually just started working for the Chronicle. And to be honest with you, this is my first story. <laughs> There's no need to be embarrassed. So, what is it you want to know? Thank you. Um, well, you are the caretaker of the oldest and the most famous cemetery in this country. And if my research is correct, you're going to be celebrating your 10th anniversary next week. You are absolutely right, Vivian. Does that make me some kind of celebrity? Well, I guess that depends on how you look at it. See, uh, I'm really interested in the human aspect of it. All the deceased here, they all have some kind of story, some kind of fate, some kind of background. You know, and I was wondering how you dealt with that. Or do you even actually deal with that at all? You're right again. Just like you, I put time into investigating as much as possible my customers. You'd be surprised at how much you can learn here about the true nature of mankind. This place, it, it oozes, just oozes truth and wisdom. Even if it's not the kind of truth that most people would easily accept. Right. That's a very interesting point. But could you give me an actual example, an actual story, something that really happened? You came at just the right time. Tomorrow, we're going to put back in the bosom of Mother Earth one of my most interesting customers. Not that he was an outstanding character by any means. He was more like an average guy. But it was the story he got involved with and the way that he got involved. His name was Robert Downey. Please go ahead and continue. Then are you absolutely sure you won't hear this? Yes, of course. at home. So, please continue about your story. Uh, Robert Downey, isn't it? Thank you. It started a couple of weeks ago. There was another man What's his name again?
Hi, Paul Potucci speaking. Hi, Mr. Downing. I've got this little package for you. Where would you like to meet? Okay. I know what it is. My pleasure. Bye. Paul Paducci speaking. What the I thought we talked this over already. Listen, I already told you that I don't have the stuff. No, you listen. I think we should let the boss decide about this. So what did Jimmy tell him then? He said what? Let me talk to Jimmy. Hey! It's me, Paul. Oh, hi, sweetheart. How are you? Listen, we've got to get out of the hotel right now. <laughs> look, look, give me half an hour. All right, I'll be no, ready. No, just grab some stuff and leave, please. I'll be there in 15 minutes. Yeah. But what's the matter? Don't ask. Just do as I told you. You understand? But... <laughs> Who's there? What are you guys doing there? Hey, Paul! I always recognize your lovely voice. I feel very sorry for you. I swear by God, if you touch him, I'll kill you! We were just in front of the door when I was calling you. You up! Don't mess with me. They find you. That's enough. Now it's time for the aviation lesson. Listen, you promised. You have to make a decision. It's me or these guys, you understand? I know, honey. But there's some important business going on right now. Then I'm out of it. Okay? What kind of business anyway? But Paul, I love you. You know that. But I want a man and not a promise. You can't live like that. And to be honest, I still don't really know what you call business. You don't want to know. Just this last deal, I promise. Hey, just think about the money. We could leave and buy a big house somewhere. I don't... I don't care about the money. I don't need a big house. I, I just don't need anything but you, okay? And we'll be fine. Everything will be fine, as long as we are just together. Please. But you have to stand by me when I have to start all over again, huh? Yeah? Yeah, well. Hi, Mortimer. It's me, Paul. Listen, Jimmy Levin could just kick Larry's. Yeah, it's just a matter of time until they find me. It's all over now, you understand? No, oh, of course I don't have to stop. What are you saying? But listen, I got one last contract for you. A hundred grand in the schedule you find right here. Okay. I'm at Big Bear Lake, 117 Lake Drive. 
Be here tomorrow morning or as soon as you can. All right. Thank you. Smells great. Oh, it's still cooking. Mmm. But it tastes fantastic. <laughs> you really are the best little cook in the world, honey. Thank you, darling. Do you open the wine? Yeah, yeah. Our friends will be coming any minute now. Actually, it's too bad. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> and we don't want to let them wait for dinner, do we? No, not on your special night, dear. Don't forget the champagne. Yeah, got it. Sorry to barge in on you like this, but I need to speak to your husband. I wouldn't disturb you like this if it wasn't urgent. Jimmy! This man here, he says he has to talk to you. It's urgent. Uh-huh. Honey, why don't you go in the kitchen and check the dinner, will you? I'm sorry. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Robert Downing. Well, we both work for the same boss, you understand? Hmm. Hmm. Do we? Honey, in all my life, I've never heard of you or seen you before. Well, that's right. You never have. You see, usually I don't work around here. But this case is different. I'm here on a very subtle and important mission for our boss. So, may I ask you a few questions? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. But hurry up, will you? We're expecting some guests. You see, today is my wife's birthday. Oh, congratulations. Take a seat. Oh, thank you. That's very generous of you. So, what is so urgent? I came to talk to you about Paul Petucci. You come to my house to talk about that piece of shit? There are rules around here and you are breaking them and I don't like it. So you come back to my office tomorrow. I'm sorry, but this can't wait. You see, we lost contact with him and we think this is connected to this little argument you have at the moment. I really don't know where he is. I don't really know where he's storing his coke. And if I did, I would go to the boss myself. You don't seem to understand. The boss does not care about the cocaine. He's interested in something else Paul was working on. So right now, we've lost Paul and the results of his efforts. So let me put it this way. Do you have I don't it? know what this is all about. And my god, if I could catch that f I'd kill him myself. Because he has bullshitted me bad. And now he's bull the boss, presumably. I have always been loyal to the boss, and he should know it. And now you know it too. Are you all right, darling? Would you like a glass of wine? No, Mr. thanks, Downing? my dear. Mr. Downing was just leaving. Weren't you, Mr. Downing? Jimmy. I'm sorry again, but since Mr. Levinson here refuses to cooperate right now, I'd like to repeat my question in front of the other gentleman. So, I'm interested in the status of Paul Petucci. 
Do you know where he is, or have you seen him? What the hell are you talking about? And who the f are you anyway? Either get an invitation. Paul Petucci has something that the boss wants, and he wants it who now. Who is this Paul Petucci anyway, huh? And whoever Listen, your boss is you've got something wrong here. Get out of my house now. All right, Mr. Dunn. These are our missing guests. They'll come in, and you'll get the hell out. And this time, Mr. Downing, you will get the hell out. Hello, Christopher. This is Robert Downing. And he's very interested in the Paul Petucci case. All right, I see. Sorry for the turmoil. Have a nice evening, then. Wait a minute. Do you know Paul Petucci? No, not quite. I'm just interested in his luggage. Listen, I want to leave now. Where do you want to go? Are you a cop? Let me go. Can you just make up your mind? A few seconds ago, you said you wanted me to leave, and now? Excuse me. What's in the suitcase? None of your business. What's in the suitcase? None of your business. Chris, please, let him go. Easy. Cool. Stupid! Oh, uh, what do you do, his driver's license? It's Robert Downey. Doesn't seem to be a fake. Could he work for Paul? Doesn't matter who he works for or why he's here. This guy is trouble. It was your job to find Paul and get rid of him. Man, this might be the beginning. And this Robert is dead meat. He was never here, you understand? OK. Rick and Mortimer will take him out to the desert. And then it's up to you to find Paul before the <laughs> hits the fan. Hey, cool it. Why do we need Rick and Mortimer? Oh, you want to kill him yourself? Well, go right ahead. No. I mean, maybe we don't have to kill him. We do like I say. You had your fun yesterday. <laughs> now it's time to take some responsibility. Yeah. Who cares about this piece of anyway? Nobody will ever find him. Yeah, but he said he worked for the boss. And that's the main reason why this asshole has to disappear. Do I make myself clear, gentlemen? Hey, Rick, Jimmy, get Mortimer and come around quick. I've got a contract. What? We've seen enough for this evening. We are scared, you understand? And we want to leave. So, we want a car. Hey, baby. The party's over when I say it's over. Come on, help yourself. There's plenty of food in the kitchen. And don't get on my nerves again, okay? You want to kill that guy, don't you? We don't want to harm a hair on his head. Now just go back to your little women's live party. I want to know what's in Downing's suitcase now. Check it. Boss? So what the is so urgent? You see this mother Paul sent him to waste us all. Yeah, I understand. So, Paul sent him. Quite possible. You shouldn't have wasted his lady. Just listen, will you? You gotta take this freak out to the desert and get rid of him. For good. Catch my drift? Yeah, sure. The first thing's first. Rick, take care of him now. Need to talk to him. Hurry! 
on their places. Now! Why don't you do it yourself? <laughs> I like your style, sweetie. But if you don't shut the f*** up right now, your sweetheart's gonna get his brains blown out. And so cute, too. When you finish, you can tie each other up. You! You're in charge of this operation. Why are you doing this? What do you want? Don't push it! You'll know. All in good time. Okay, done. What next? <laughs> Goody! You know the plan. Get the rest of the bay. Gentlemen, I must insist on a little cooperation. <laughs> Rick and I are going to ask you a few simple questions, and you are going to give us a few simple answers. <laughs> Brad, stop whining, I'll have to terminate you now. Are you going to kill us? <laughs> that depends on you, sweetie. First, I want some very specific information. Rick, bring him back. I need to talk to him now. Well, I'm so sorry, Jimmy. But how should I know that you tie your little gun to your leg? But you should be grateful to Rick. He saved your very life. God damn mother f son of a bitch. The boss will rip your chest open and take a f dump on your rotten heart. I don't think so. See, Jimmy boy, the boss is not very amused with your recent actions. First, the coke disappears, and then you put the blame on Paul. Next thing that happens is Clarice is flying out of the 30th floor window. F that. That draws way too much attention. That's bad for business. Very bad. <laughs> and then there's this ugly, ugly thing with Paul. What about Paul? Asshole split. I didn't do that. Yeah, I know. You and your amateur friends are too stupid to find him. He's 
killed himself. But that's what you wanted, wasn't it, Jimmy boy? You know, I wonder if you and your pals haven't lost your nerve. Rick and I never lose our countenance. And that's why the boss and the tragically deceased Paul send such sensitive gentlemen like us. Come on, Rick. Let's show them how sensitive we can be. I would now like to conduct a little meaningful, thoughtful discussion. And that means you, Jimmy boy. The boss can't help his increasing distrust. What is this? Are you so gullible? You believe every thing you hear? It's not true. Now, would you look at this shit? Can somebody tell me what this is? Man, it freaks me out. This is a real human heart. And a pretty fresh one, too. Here, Jimmy. Or maybe here. What about here? No, 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 no. Here, Jimmy. Think hard, Jimmy boy. Wait, no! I have it, god damn it! You have it? You a fing liar! You use this for your fing ego trip! I can't believe it! Where is it? In the car. The briefcase. This isn't true. You mean you've been driving around with it all this time? Rick, hurry, get the stuff. We've got nothing to do with this. <laughs> That's right. But you're all involved anyway. Look, this scumbag here and his retarded pals went a little crazy and killed the lovely wife of the innocent Paul. And then the heartbroken Paul, my dear friend, kills himself. Well, now, you are just going to have to deal with that. You're just in the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm sorry. F heavens. You're a f liar. My husband would never kill anybody. Listen, honey, I don't give a flying f who, when, or how your husband usually kills. This is not about your husband. What we got here is a conflict of interest. See, Jimmy boy's got the coke, and my boss wants it back. Jimmy puts the blame on Paul, and everyone gets <laughs> Paul's wife gets killed, so he hires me to get even. It's simple! You just shouldn't have trusted this scumbag in the first place. We're sick transits, Gloria Monday. <laughs> Tonight, we're gonna ball.
Mom, man. Let me be the next one. I want to be the next. Please. Please, I can't take it anymore. Your wish is my command. Look, Howard. Here it is. We're gonna put it at your throat. Right here. You understand? No, I'm gonna load it for you. You won't feel the pain. You won't even feel the shots. You just killed my dear friend. Listen, I'm in charge right now. You understand? Please. Please let me go. I can't take it anymore. You had a f evening, didn't you? You know, I would love to get you know a little better, but I can't. So, Jimmy, you didn't invite me to your little party yesterday. How did your wife like my little present? What are you doing here? You're supposed to be dead. Uh -uh. Wrong again, as usual, my friend. What's with the corpse? Just some guy from Muscle Beach. You know, I shot him in the face. Then I dressed him with my clothes. Hey, you even got my watch. And then I roasted him in the fireplace. Just before that, I called Rick, Mortimer, to found some cash, my last will, and my remains. Got it? Brilliant. Jimmy, you know, in some ways, you made all this possible. I mean, look at this mess. Tell me, did you really believe my life would get useless after the death of Clarice? Tell me, come on. You see, now it's all you. The cash, the coke, the relic. Thank you. Bravo. What a greedy son of a bitch. You're just like all the rest of us. It's all your fault. We start playing games, huh? Look, look where it's gotten you now. 
You've gotten everything you've wanted. I bet that feels absolutely wonderful. What more could you possibly want now? You. Gucci. I hate to be kept waiting. That was terrible, huh? Well, I've heard a lot of stories in my time, but that one... That one definitely is uh, beyond the limits. Um, so, uh, Robert survived, right? Yes, he did. But he got busted. Idiot. Tried to sell the stuff to an undercover cop. And a few days later in jail, he was murdered. <laughs> Friend of Jimmy's. Doing time. Stabbed him in the chest with a nail. Seventy times. <laughs> okay, um... So why is he going to be buried here? Because he's from here. I knew him well. His parents still live here. They brought him back here. The heart. I was wondering about the heart. What was it that was so special? That was so precious about that heart. Yes. Yes, the heart. You remember that grave? That yeah. Good. That is a very special grave. And the fate of the man who's buried there is strongly connected to the heart. The eternal heart. I'm sorry, but I still don't understand. The story began a long time ago. And it ended in the year 1452. There was a James Flynn priest and true believer he become very disenchanted with the church and fallen away as so many people did during those years the church accused him of a violation of christian dogma and wanted to prosecute so he fled to the countryside where he established a remote little community for his followers he found no peace there Why do you need 20 men to arrest James Flynn? This community of peaceful, God-loving people, they wouldn't dare to resist. 
I don't need Sir, to please explain my... Sir, please can see clemency. Well, Dennis, I do not need to explain my actions to you. I am answerable to the church. You would better do as you're told. You may find yourself suffering the same fate as this heretic, Flynn. In nomine Patres, et Filii, Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. So we finally meet again, my dear, dear brother. James Flynn. You are accused of heresy and of violating the holy dogma of the church. In addition, you have stood in open opposition of the eternal wisdom of the Holy Bible. You even dare to poison the souls of this innocent community. We serve the Lord the way he taught us. Here, you see true belief and redemption. You have no right to condemn us. It is not I who condemn you, but our Holy Mother, the Church. Your life is forfeited. You, the merciful Church, will forgive. If you refute your ill-fated faith and repent. Go now and repent. I said, do your penance. But go now! Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Heretics, lost souls, all of you, will confess your sins. And may God have mercy on your ill-fated souls! But spare the priest, I need him alive. Whatever you do, we forgive you. But listen to your hearts. Don't offend yourself in God's holy name. <laughs> It was your duty to arraign these people to the court of the Inquisition, not to kill them on the spot. Array? Maybe it is you we should array. Why do you plead for this life of a heretic? Are you an ally? Are you? Are you part of this conspiracy of Satan? No, of course not. But this man has done nothing against the laws. And these people... Don't you tell me what I should do or not do. It's God's will. at the gathering and you just stood there and watched. Annabelle, I was desperate to prevent what happened, but I couldn't intervene. You think I have any idea they would kill all those innocent people? They seized James Flynn. I think they will execute him. These cowards, may they burn in hell. Annabelle, you must leave. Do you realize if I wasn't able to warn you that David Deming and his soldiers were on the way to the mass, you and your father would be dead. Deming will not hesitate to investigate further. You see, you're not safe here anymore. Deming is supposed to leave soon, isn't he? He took quarters in the village with this other beast, Tom Brewster. Do you realize they will break Flynn's will? He will confess. 
Darling, we must flee. Where are we supposed to go? Anywhere. I cannot leave my father behind, Dennis. Then he shall come too. Annabelle, I love you so much. I want to spend the rest of my life with you, take care of you. You're my one and only. Our love for the laws God gave to us. God may know what we have done, but nobody else will, I promise you. James Flynn, confess. You shall be granted a merciful death. You can kill me if you want. I'm not afraid. But I know what you want. And I will never reveal this secret. Never. To Ames Flynn, have you in any way ever been in conspiracy with Satan? <laughs> Spare me your hypocrisy. It is you who conspires with the devil. <laughs> And now that you found the holy relic, you think it will bring you power, but it will destroy you. Hell on earth awaits you. You listen to me. We do not have very much time left. You are going to die at the stake and soon. That is why they sent me. Now, it is for you to decide, my old master, if you want me and my new master to show you some mercy. Forgive me, Holy Father, for I have failed. I should have never let you be initiated into the Holy Order of the Eternal Heart. I should have banned you from the congregation. And... You see, why do you provoke me? I suffer with you suffer more than you. I know that you wanted to translate those scripts. Only you were brilliant enough to do such a thing. I know that you wanted to keep the secret, but you were wrong. Your God is a cruel God, whereas my master delivers kindness. Where is your God now? Does he comfort you now? There is no God, and there is no heaven, and you know that as well as I do. My master promises the delights of absolute power here on Earth. Come over to my side and live forever. He really doesn't see your point. Maybe he'll see mine. He was my abbot. He was like a father to me. Don't get me wrong, sir, but you don't treat him like a loving son would. Don't you dare speak to me like there. that again! Hit me again. Listen, all of this doesn't happen with the blessing of our church. This interrogation only serves your private interests. What would the Cardinal say if he knew that we Stole the relic. What would the Cardinal say? Come over here. The 
years. Isn't it beautiful? The eternal heart. The most precious of all treasures. The heart of Belial. Lucifer, my lord and master, sent his son to Earth to bring immortality to mankind. But the people were timid and stupid, and they killed the master of the mystery, Belial. But one of them stole the heart. Much later, it fell into the hands of Aziz al-Hazreb, the genius of the occult. And he realized that the heart contained the secret of eternal life. He unraveled the secret and wrote it down in secrets. During the Crusades, his heart found its way into our monastery. When Flynn became abbot, he locked it away, but he studied the scripts. And he must have translated them. I know he did. He's brilliant. On a night, I stole the original scripts. And he found out. And he left the monastery and stole the heart and took it with him and disappeared. And I've been searching for him for years. And now I've found him. He knows the secret. I'm sure of it. Well, then. We can't afford to waste any more time. I still think we could have broken as well. I don't think so. If we had continued, we would have died on the rack. Let's bring this to its destination and burn him. The people and our contractors want some results. But the translation. Without it, this was all in vain. Sir, so believe me. I'm absolutely positive that a man with your wisdom and a man with my abilities are able to solve that mystery without the aid of your former master. Christians. James Flynn has been convicted of severe heresy and blasphemy and the propagation of satanic doctrine. He has confessed that in official interrogation, therefore no mercy or remorse shall be granted. We, the community of Christians and the true believers in God, to the cleansing fire, so that his body and soul may find purification. We shall resurrect Belial. I know it now. Oh my God. What will we do next? I don't know yet. We must study the scripts more closely. Perhaps the illustrations will reveal some clue. that old priest, you and your young friend, that officer, your behavior at the execution was quite remarkable. And my master noticed that too. James Flynn is a martyr. <laughs> Don't charge yourself. You know that we are here to end all kinds of disbelief. Believe me, my master would be very unsatisfied about these heretic opinions. Leave our land. Of course. I'll go. But the question here is, when will I return? And will I come alone? 
when I come back, you will greet me in some friendlier manner. Or you will force me to deliver some more heritage. Or maybe you should think about your father. So who was that you were talking to today? What do you mean? I saw you through the window. What did he want? Nothing. He just wanted to talk. Was it David Damming? No. Brewster. Damming will come for you as he did James Flynn. You have to leave now. I will come with you. No. We'll stay here. I've spent all of my life here. I can't go away now. I'm too old. We have to put our fates in God's hand. He will help us. You called for me, sir? That's a tragedy. Those human remains. And all from this village. You heard. Of course I did. What do you want from me, sir? You are to lead the investigations to find the culprits. Satan still walks among us. This is clearly the work of heretics. Some disciples of that unholy priest must have slipped through our fingers. You will find them and deliver each and every one of them to me. Sir, there is no connection to James Flynn. I'm begging you. Silence! You will follow my orders, or you will end up at the stake for desertion. <laughs> this is your chance to prove your loyalty to the Holy Church, Dennis. You'll concentrate your efforts on the Branner family. They are our prime suspects. Sir, so the Branners, they are honorable people. Did Brewster arouse that suspicion? What did you want at the farm? Careful. I was only fulfilling my duties. Sir, you've already found and killed all the members of Flint's community. I seriously doubt that happened with the blessing of the church. Once and for all, that is none of your business. Now, you will oblige me by carrying out my orders, and I want some results. Otherwise, first you will go to the place where the bodies were found, and then you will come back here. Understood? Oh, we will report back to Mr. Brewster, giving him a full account of all your findings. Yes, sir. You wanted some leisure? Go and get some. Sir, thank you for your cunning consideration. I have not heard from him, Father. No, please. Remain seated. I won't be staying for supper. I'm just here for a little conversation with your lovely daughter. Sir, please leave my home now. I'm leading an investigation in the name of our beloved church. Don't you dare to impede my work. Father, please, everything will be fine. So, shall we? Start that you were a reasonable maid.
Have you found any clues? No, sir. I'm begging you, please dismiss me from this duty. Reject it. Your work has only just begun. There's been some new development. I entrusted Brewster with an interrogation of the Branner family. Old Mr. Branner entangled himself in his own lies and then attacked and harmed Mr. Brewster. It's absolutely impossible. Shut up! These servants of Satan have clearly perjured themselves! Luckily, Mr. Brewster managed to fight him off and get away. But so did the daughter. Oh, Mr. Branner. Hmm? You will go directly and you will chase down them. Oh, go on. There is not a moment to lose. They are innocent. Well, maybe I shall have to send Mr. Brewster to find them. I'm sure you'd like that, wouldn't you? Brussels. You will kill them. Only if they dare to resist. So did you find what you were looking for? Yes, I did. Too bad. You won't be able to tell anybody about it. Lady, do not be afraid. On the contrary, you should be glad to sacrifice your miserable existence for such a great cause. Where is Deming? What have you done with the Branners? Just watch your words, my dear heretic's friend. So you're back again, pretty early. That's how you aim to fulfill your duty? Well, you know what that means. What is that about? We found her and took her to the master. Right now, she's engaged in inquisitoric interrogation. And she will confess all of her misdeeds, believe me. Good. You've woken up just at the right time, my dear. Did you see that? She was alive. Look, the heart is beating faster and faster. With you, it could work. Dennis will find you and deliver you to the Inquisition, and there you will burn. Dennis is dead, my dear. Killed by my soldiers. 
tackled by Brewster, you understand? And it was all legal. He was an enemy of the church. No! <laughs> so you seize this man. So perfect. You're so strong. You're so young. You're so good. in your body and then he will bless his servant with the gift of immortality to die in Coventry. I ask you for the last time, where is Maribel? <clears throat> she will sacrifice herself for a name that is so sublime and magnificent that she will never understand. But if you ask me, she will die a little too early, for I would have loved to have finished what I began, even if she wasn't too enthusiastic about it. <laughs> you bastard! <laughs> Do not be afraid, my dear. No! Annabelle. Dennis, you cannot help her anymore. Let me explain. Her sacrifice must not be wasted. Let me end what I have begun. We will succeed, and you will be rewarded by my master. In the name of God, I will do right. You will pay for this. My love, so I see thee one last time. Please hold me. Annabelle, please forgive me. I should have been able to protect you. Be strong. It is me who must ask for forgiveness. We cannot escape the wrath of God. No. No. Follow me now! No. You have destroyed everything for me. Now you must kill me. I will not go with you. Please, kill me. Death by my hand is too easy for you. And I would never kill a helpless person. Unlike you! Yes, I have done that, you're right. But out of conviction that it had to be done. Just like you. You do what you are convinced of. We are like each other. Dennis. Look around you. All we have loved and lived for has been destroyed, burned to ashes. My life is useless now. My master has abandoned me. Your God is supposed to be the God of mercy. Then act in the name of your God and show me some mercy. Grant me a quick death. Please, I'm begging you. Reject it! Come to an end with all your lies and hypocrisy! You're coming with me, now!
journey has come to an end. What happened? I am afraid. <laughs> you don't have to be afraid. This is the beyond. Here, all your sins are forgiven. Forgive me. I don't understand. I killed. I tortured. I abused. You, my good master, I burned to ashes. How can you forgive me? My dear brother, you've been wandering in the dark valley. your soul, your spirit. It is all so very simple. Yeah. Now, everything is good. Come with me now. I will take you to the place of your destination from the very beginning. All that you were longing for I forgive you, brother. Thank you for your cooperation. You really have been a great listener. And now your patience shall be rewarded. Good old Robert. He brought it all to me. Hello, it's Robert. No, he didn't show up. Well, if he didn't show up, go to his house. Go to Paul's house. What now? Well, if it wasn't there, it has to be at Jimmy's. Just find it. He traveled the world, searching for the heart of the manuscripts. Ten years. Work in the name of Belial. And then when he came back to bring me the heart, he told me about his little adventure. Do you know the books? You've actually met him. And that he wanted to leave me and his master. Well, I couldn't let that happen. You understand. And then when I searched the car, I realized why he wanted to leave. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope you'll forgive me this little lie I told you about his end. <laughs> You're not laughing. You're not even breathing. You are perfect. You are young. You are strong. You are good. You were just made for the eternal heart. I'm sorry. You're gonna have to leave now.